All right, guys, let's build a latch system. Well, the reason I like this is because, one, it's, it matches with what we are doing in our curriculum, and also it uses a joint and some other features in Fusion I don't get to use too often in more of a correct setting. So we've got working latch system with a cylindrical joint, and we're using contact sets. So these are considered as physical bodies. They won't go through each other kind of actually as a latch would exist. Um, I just think it is just too cool for school. So I'm gonna, let's just do it. Okay, I'm gonna click on new design and then let's click create, create sketch. I'm gonna go to my top plane right here and draw a rectangle. So I'm in R for rectangle and I'm gonna draw two rectangles. I'm gonna give them dimensionals to like four inches by two inches. So we got two inches, dimension, four inches, looks good. Maybe give that gap, let's give that gap like half an inch. We don't need much of a gap between for our latch. And then let's go ahead and hit finish sketch. I'm gonna extrude both of these up, like a quarter inch, just to start my plates for my bodies. Next thing I'm gonna do is, um, actually, let's just keep going from here. Uh, I'm gonna create a sketch on this side plane right here. I'm gonna hit C for circle, and I'm gonna choose some point in the middle-ish of this plate. So I'm gonna go for that midpoint constraint and go straight up. So we can see those dotted lines there. We're gonna draw all three circles. One is for the outside of our barrel for our latch, and then the other one would be the inside circle for our, uh, our actual slider to go through. So I'm gonna dimension this inside slider to be 0.37, the barrel to be 0.375, because we want just a small tolerance for our barrel slide, and we'll do this one as half an inch. Looks okay to me so far. I'm gonna go ahead and just draw some lines just to connect this geometry to our plate so far. So L for line, Looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish sketch. Let's extrude this out. So I'm gonna extrude this out and make our barrel for our slide. We don't want to actually um, reproduce this on the other slide. You could, but then you would join those two bodies together and we don't wanna do that. I think I did that on my other uh, version, but let's see if we can get something else going on here. And what I'm gonna do instead is use the mirror command. So we're going to click on join. That looks good to me. We could actually go ahead and fill it this just a little bit to make it look a little bit more clean. Oh man, this is going this is already going to look better than my uh, my first one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's click on uh, mirror. Looks good to me. We're going to mirror some features. that fillet in the extrude. So I click down on the bottom for that one. Let me, uh, there we go, full screen so you can see that just a little bit better. Um, so I clicked on features for our mirror. Objects we selected for that mirror was the extrude and the fillet from down below. And the mirror plane we're gonna use, we should be able to use our origin planes. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna mirror that. Ooh, you know what? I can't because my mirror plane isn't gonna work. Actually, it would because there's a gap between the two. Let's do this. Let's go back here. I'm gonna go back to here. I'm gonna deselect this and just have this one piece. And now I think you know what I'm gonna do. We're gonna create move copy. We're gonna take this. We're gonna create a copy, and we're just gonna move it. Look at that. Boom, more than one way to make the same thing. Looks good to me so far. I'm gonna make that sketch active earlier that we had from this side view right here. I'm gonna hit E for extrude, and this is gonna be our slider. I'm gonna go all the way through on that one. 
looks okay to me. And that's going to be a new body. So right now, what do I have? I have, should I have three bodies. I got, I'm going to call this my right. Catch, let's do right catch. I'm going to do left catch. And then I'm going to do the slide. Okay. We're going to keep editing our geometry before we turn to components, just because that's a clean way to do some of these edits. I'm going to go ahead and make my slide inactive. I'm going to create a new, I'm going to do an offset sketch. So in order to offset sketch, we need an offset plane. So right click, offset plane, somewhere above our catch. That looks good to me. So let's create a sketch on that plane. And I'm just going to draw some rough geometry for some lines for our catches to go through. Just make sure everything's nice and good. You see a bunch of perpendicular constraints in there. Looks good to me. Um, just to make sure everything else is good, let's go ahead and make sure we got all the other lines perpendicular. That way they're nice and rounded off. So that looks good. That looks good. I'm just going to drag this over to where this matches that other side pretty evenly. You could throw in dimensions in there, but what for what we're going, we're going for prototype and we're not necessarily going for that true design scale. I'm going to remove, look at that. I'm going to remove enough of my barrel catch so that way I can put in my slide. So notice my slide's in there, but I'm not removing anything out of my slide because my slide is inactive. We're gonna do cut, click OK. Now since my slide was inactive when I did that cut operation, notice how it didn't affect anything else. Um, that my slide is still intact and it looks good. Only thing we really need to do now is put a paddle on our, uh, our slide. And I'm going to do that. So I'm going to make that sketch plane that was earlier. And let's, let's click on that create sketch plane off of that offset. Go into that top view again. I'm just going to hit R for rectangle. And I'm going to draw a rectangle over where that paddle, where I want it to be. I'll hit E for extrude and bring it down into and join. Look at that. Let's go ahead and thin it out too while I'm at it. And then click OK. So just doing some simple extrusions, we were able to get this latch system to work. Honestly, this looks pretty cool. We can make it look even better. One easy way to make stuff even better is to add some fillets. So I'm just going to add in a very small fillet right there. That makes that piece look pristine. While I'm at it, I'm also going to add in this fillet down here just to make it look nice and smooth and rounded and welded. While I'm at it, I'm also going to do these two fillets just to really bring the piece in. That just looks too good. Okay. So I've got three bodies. We can't move them, though. Well, why can't we move them? That's because they're not components. So I'm going to take these three bodies, highlight them all, right-click, create components from bodies. Now I can move them, but we don't want to because we want to use as-built joints. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a as-built joint and say this right side is built in joint with the origin plane. Now I know that's, that sounds funky, but what that does is it takes your right piece and fixes it to the origin point. So there's no more grounding. We don't ground, but instead we fix it to the origin point. Next thing I do is let's do a ridge group. Um, actually, we don't want to do a rigid. Well, yeah, let's do a rigid group for what we have here. Let's do a rigid group saying the left and right pieces will not move independent from each other. Looks okay. So if I try to drag that left piece around, it doesn't move. 
Next thing I'm gonna do is do an as-built joint, and this thing where it gets really cool, we're gonna do a cylindrical joint. You could do a revolute and a slider, but a cylindrical does two in one. We want this component to interact with this component, and that face we're gonna choose is that center right there. Boom, looks pretty good. But since we want this to actually be in true uh, possible use, let's see if I can get away with this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on all contact sets. What this does is right now, if I were to move this slider, see how I can go through my parts? I don't like that. Instead, let's do enable all contact sets. It makes these objects act as physical components. You cannot move them through each other. So now notice I can't move left or right anymore. I can move up, I can slide this down, and it locks in place. I think this is just a wonderful exercise of using a joint we don't typically use along with contact sets. And it looks good to me, folks. Okay. If you've got any questions, let me know. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.